number one, I have my fiber nests. These are three ounces each soaking. And you really want to make sure that you push them into the water and squeeze out the air bubbles and that'll help with saturation, meaning that it's totally wet. Because see these areas that aren't fully wetted? You'll have a white patch when you go to dye it. Second, you want citric acid. This is about a quarter cup and I'm going to dissolve it with very hot water. Oops, I can do this one-handed. We're gonna use this citric acid water when we shear out our colors, but we wanna maintain the same acid content so that we don't have any bleeds, but we can still get a nice gradation of 1%, 2%, 3%, and 4% saturation in the same skein this double wide cling film not the stuff from the store because it actually allows me to lay multiple rovings out at a time and the recipe for all of these dye stocks is in the comments below but I make like five and a half to six percent dye stock to start with and then I shear it out as necessary with one of these little 60 ml lure lock syringes and our citric acid water so we're going to take a piece of plastic wrap and you want it to be at least eight inches longer than you need it to be for when we seal it up. I lay mine out in half. What this means is, is that you can spin one long continuous single and then ply from either end of the ball and have them book matched. And we're gonna do that with two more so we can get three identical three ounce roving. The first set of roving is gonna be these four colors. And instead of going just from color A to B to C to D, we're going to do several saturations of just the hot pink, then hot pink and flirt, uh, rhodamine red, then just rhodamine red, then rhodamine red mixed with this brick orange color, then just brick orange, and then we're going to do brick orange mixed with this hot orange, and then finally to a neon peach, which is actually those two colors combined right there. And the way we do this is we measure, so 10 ml of dye, and then say 40 ml of water will give us a pale shade. Then we'll do 20 and 20 of dye and water, then 30 and 10, and then just 40 ml of dye. And I will show you how that gets you a really smooth, even gradient all the way across. I'm going to grab 40 ml of citric acid water and 10 ml of dye. And that's what I love about these syringes is it allows you to be really precise. I inject my dye and then I work it in. Usually I, this is a two-handed procedure, but I have my phone in one hand. And you really do wanna press that die in because otherwise you're gonna have white patches in the middle. And when you go to spin it, you'll get a barber pole effect. So we're gonna do two sections of 4010 ml dye in citric acid water. So now we have our first section on and I always check the back and see these little white marks. We gotta make sure that we work the die in I'll squeeze it together gently, 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 and there we go. Now we're going to go on to the next section, and this will be covered up by that. I'm going to do 20 ml of dye and squeeze it down to 20. Now I'm going to rinse the tip here. I have a rinse jar. I do not want to get any dye in my citric acid, and then fill the syringe to the top. There we go. And now we're going to work this second section in. Now it's going to be 40 ml of dye stock and only 20 ml water. And you know, if you're new with these syringes or you're afraid of getting your citric acid water dirty, you can always pull up the citric acid water first. There we go. And as you can see, there's already a fade beginning. So this is going to be the third darkest. The last section is going to be just concentrated dye stock. There we go. Now we're going to do half of the hot pink. And we're going to rinse our tip. And then we're going to do half of the rhodamine red. As you can see, it's a really beautiful, super rich, super dark magenta. And now just rhodamine red. I'm going to go between the rhodamine red and the dark brick red orange color. So we're going to do 60 ml, I'm sorry, 40 ml of the pink and 20 ml of the orange. So we get a nice fade right here. Okay. And we 
rinse our tip and then we fill to the top. See, it's an absolutely gorgeous color. I'm so excited to show you guys when it's dry. And then another thing, you know, move your color forward, not side to side. Otherwise you'll get too much bleeding on the sides and then you end up having to wipe this up or it'll muddy your colors. And now we're going to do 30-30, right? So half and half. And then the next one is going to be basically almost all orange with just a little pink and so on and so forth. It's all done. And as you can see, it's a really nice fade. I'll show you pictures, of course, when it's dry as well. But the most important thing is to wipe up all the excess because all of this excess dye is going to leach out and be pulled along and you'll get a lot of modeling at the sides like dirty dusty colors so we just want to make sure that this is really clean now we're going to take the excess end and bring it up same on the other side and then we want to make sure that we wrap both sides up like this. We want the seam to be up. If the seam is facing down, you're gonna puke dye onto whatever's underneath it and you're gonna lose a lot of vibrancy. So you always want the seam to be up. Now we're just gonna roll this like a big old jelly donut. And there we have it, ready to go into the steamer. No leaking, we're good. So I'm gonna do the other two. This colorway is going to be these four colors, which is Bright Aqua from Dharma, Turquoise from Prochem, Bright Blue from Prochem, and this is the, my, one of my most favorite colors. It's Midnight Blue from Dharma. And we're going to do that fade where it's some of this, then this plus this, then just this color, then these two mixed, and finally. Here's the beautiful gradient that's like the top of the sky right as it's getting dark, and the violet for the clouds, and that hot pink and then going to like a neon peach and hot orange. We're gonna take our cake and into the steamer it goes for a full 45 minutes and 12 hours to cool. Now that they're totally room temperature the next day, we can rinse them. Now before we've even started rinsing it, you can see that the water is totally clear. We're just rinsing it to get rid of that excess acid. And if you want to be really, really careful, you can rinse it section by section. I did this all in one section. And I want to show you how beautiful the roving is. This is no filter. 